In this part, I will cover the following topics. In this part, I will cover the practical transformer equivalent circuit. In the previous part of this chapter, we have seen how we can represent and analyze an ideal transformer with the two winding theory. Remember that for the ideal transformer, we have neglected the winding resistances, the leakage fluxes, and the core loss. In the practical transformer, these may not be neglected, so we will need to consider them. So we can represent the practical transformer as an ideal transformer to which we add the primary and secondary winding resistances R1 and R2 and the leakage fluxes phi L1 and phi L2 as shown in this figure. Therefore, we can represent the transformer circuit model as shown in this figure, where R1 and R2 are the resistances of the primary and secondary winding, XL1 and XL2 are the leakage reactances of the primary and secondary windings, and LL1 and LL2 are the leakage inductances of the primary and secondary windings. So we have the primary winding represented by the model inside the green box, the secondary winding represented by the circuit model inside the blue box, and the magnetic core represented by the circuit inside this orange box. Notice that we have a mixing of electric and magnetic circuits in this model of the transformer. In practice, a magnetizing current component, IM, is required to establish the mutual flux phi M in the core. This effect can be represented by a magnetizing inductance LM or a magnetizing reactance XM as shown on this circuit. On the other hand, the core loss can be represented by a resistance RC. Therefore, we can represent the magnetic core with the electric parallel branch and in the ideal transformer that converts the voltage and current according to the winding turns ratio as we've seen in the previous part. So a practical transformer is equivalent to an ideal transformer plus external impedances that represent imperfection of the actual transformer. Now using Kirchhoff voltage law in the primary circuit loop, we can obtain this equation. Knowing that E2 over E1 is equal to the turns ratio N2 over N1, we can rewrite these equations as follows. Now if you apply Kirchhoff voltage law to the secondary loop circuit, we can obtain this equation which if we combine with the previous equation, we can get this one. Knowing that I2 is equal to I prime 2 multiplied by the turns ratio N1 over N2, we can rewrite the previous equation as follows. Using the previous equation and considering the impedance transfer from secondary to the primary side, which we have seen in the previous part, which leads to R prime 2 equal to R2 multiplied by the square of N1 over N2, and X prime 2 equals to X2 multiplied by the square of N1 over N2. Then we can obtain this equation from the previous ones, which can be further rearranged as shown here. This is an important equation which will help us develop further the transformer equivalent circuit as we will see in the next slide. So if we contemplate very well the different parts of this equation, we can redraw the equivalent circuit as shown here. Notice that the ideal transformer has been moved further to the right and connects directly to the external load. If the load impedance is designated by Z2, this impedance can be also transferred to the primary side 
and B denoted Z prime 2 equal to A square Z2 where A is a turn ratio. Therefore, the final electric equivalent circuit of the transformer can be drawn as shown here. Notice that we have got rid of the magnetic circuit and we have represented the transformer by a purely electric circuit which can be used to calculate and analyze the performance of the transformer. Notice that in this transformer equivalent circuit, the parallel branch in the middle makes it a bit complex to find the relation between input and output variables, current and voltages. In some cases, and for quick analysis, if the voltage drop in the primary winding is negligible, compared to the terminal voltage, then we can approximate the terminal voltage V1 to the induced EMF E1. Thus, we can move the shunt branch from the middle of the terminals of the primary side as shown in this figure. The series connection of the primary and secondary winding impedances can be represented by an equivalent impedance Z equivalent 1 that is equal to R equivalent 1 plus Jx equivalent 1. This circuit can be used as an approximate equivalent circuit and model of the transformer. In some cases, the excitation I phi 1 is also very small compared to I1. For instance, if I phi 1 is smaller or equal to 5% of the primary current I1, then it is possible to remove the shunt branch. Thus, we can obtain a much simpler approximate circuit which relates directly the primary input to the secondary output through a simple equivalent impedance Z equivalent one. Note that this approximate equivalent circuit is referred to the primary side of the transformer. Depending on the type of calculations we want to perform and the known and unknown parameters and variables, we can use the approximate circuit referred to the primary side or the approximate circuit referred to the secondary side. The parameters of these two approximate circuits are interrelated with this set of equations. Notice that in the case of the approximate circuit referred to the secondary side, the primary winding parameters and variables are assigned a prime symbol, which designates that they are not the actual values. The voltage and currents are also related using the transformer's turns ratio. Now let's move to the analysis of the transformer characteristics and performance using the equivalent circuits we have just studied. Based on the approximate equivalent circuit, we can express the voltage equation using the Kirchhoff's law as shown here. Then we can use this equation and represent the voltage drop in the equivalent impedance using the complex vector diagram. We start by drawing the current vector R prime 2 and take as a phase reference. The voltage drop in resistance R equivalent is in phase with the current I prime 2, while the voltage drop in the equivalent reactance X equivalent is leading the current I prime 2 with an angle of 90 degrees. And the voltage drop across the equivalent impedance Z equivalent is actually the sum of these two vectors. So if we know the current direction and the equivalent impedance, resistance and reactance components, we can easily draw the voltage drop across the transformer internal impedance Z equivalent. This will help us, as we can see in the next slides, to determine the terminal voltages using the vector diagrams. Indeed, based on the previous analysis, if you consider that the transformer is connected to a load with lagging power factor, 
This will mean that the current in the load, I prime 2, will be lagging behind the transformer output voltage, V prime 2, with a certain angle theta. If you consider that the output voltage, V prime 2, is the reference voltage vector with zero phase angle, since we know that the output current is lagging, then we can draw it like this with the lagging phase angle theta. Now to find V1, we can use this equation, or we can proceed graphically using the vector diagram. We can start by drawing I prime to R equivalent, which is in phase with the current vector, as we have seen in the previous slide. Then draw I prime to X equivalent, which is leading the current by 90 degrees. The resultant vector will be the total voltage drop across the transformer internal impedance Z equivalent. Thus, the transformer primary or input voltage V1 can be obtained by joining the origin point to the end point of the I prime to Z equivalent vector. We can measure the angle delta between the primary and secondary voltages. The vector diagram is a graphical representation which illustrates better the characteristics of the different variables inside the transformer. For instance, their sizes, such as their RMS and magnitude, and position, such as their phase angle, and it also shows well if the vectors are leading or lagging. We can follow the same procedure and see what happens when the load is having a leading power factor. As usual, we start by drawing the load terminal voltage, V prime 2, as the reference voltage with zero phase angle. Then we draw the load current, which in this case is leading the voltage with an angle theta. Then we draw I prime 2 R equivalent and J I prime 2 X equivalent and deduce I prime 2 Z equivalent. Finally, we can draw V1 and find its amplitude and phase angle delta. Note that the analytical calculations using the complex numbers representation of impedances, voltage, and currents should lead to the same results. This is the end of this part. Thank you for watching.